Uh, call Clayton Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I'd like to rise on behalf of uh, New Zealand First uh, to support this uh, Crimes Match Fixing Amendment Bill uh, in its third reading. And uh, me, myself, being quite new to the, uh, to the chamber here, it may not be the first time, I certainly hope it's not, but to see a partisan approach by all parties, uh, seeing the common sense at the highest level of supporting this bill um, is, gives me great feeling, Mr Speaker. And although we don't probably share the same sentiments, I certainly don't with some of the aspects that uh, uh, has been shared by the Greens with regards to uh, sports betting in its entirety. I think that the, the intent is there nonetheless to try and tidy up the dirty side of sports. Mr Speaker, I am pleased to be rising. Um, this is an overdue amendment to the legislation clarifies uh, that much uh, uh, fixing is a form of uh, deception under the Section 240 of the Crimes Act and ensures that criminal sanctions are available. So the bill is not designed to address every kind of match fixing. It focuses on the most serious kind, where the intent is to influence a betting outcome and specifically relates to a monetary gain. A strong connection with better uh, betting activity is necessary to reduce the risk that any uh, unintended activity that may occur in the course of a sporting match be criminalised. For example, collapsing a scrum in rugby or pur uh, purposefully kicking a ball out on Thank the full you. from kickoff. These sorts of things need to be addressed, Mr Speaker, and having a, a, an approach with the betting agencies to make sure that uh, these sorts of things don't go on by taking those betting approaches outside of their scope. That may, of course, like every action, have a reaction and may uh, introduce some new aspects that we hadn't thought of with regards to illegal betting, however. It's not going to be a very easy problem to fix, and it has been around for a very long time. Those who manipulate a match for any other reason, including tactical or strategic sporting reasons, uh, will not commit an offence under this bill. Where a player is blackmailed, they will not have committed an offence under Section 240A of the Crimes Act. The player will be the victim of the blackmail and should not be liable for this offence, but will be in all likelihood be liable for punishment by the governing sports body. A person who blackmails a player to match fix is likely to have committed the offence of blackmail and can be held liable for that offence, Mr Speaker. Manipulation <clears throat> excuse me, of sports matches for reasons other than to influence a betting outcome must be dealt with by such non-legislative tools as codes of conduct developed by governing sports bodies. Under this bill, anyone who obtained a benefit or caused a loss by engaging in match fixing would commit an offence and be liable to a maximum penalty of seven years imprisonment. I do, however, like to say would, would be a good addition to also give them a uh, ban from their sports code, which is not currently in the legislation, but would certainly be a good point uh, to raise in the future. Any offences uh, created overseas in the Crimes Act already covers the issues arising from match fixing by New Zealanders who live overseas under Section 7 of the Act ensures that where the event occurs in New Zealand or any act or omission which forms part of the event occurs in New Zealand, then a person who is not residing in New Zealand at the time of the act may also be liable. Select Committee recommended amending Clause 4 of the Bill by removing the words otherwise than for tactical or strategic sporting reasons. From the definition of deception, this phrase could be confusing and might open up an unintended defence. As introduced, the Bill would provide a defence where a match was manipulated at least in part for tactical or strategic sporting reasons. This defence might apply even if the manipulator also acted with the intention of influencing a betting outcome. So, for example, a person who deliberately lost a match to gain an advantage in the next round, but also bet on the results, who also bet on the result, would escape liability. This would clearly be contrary to the intent of the bill. Removing these words would make it clear that an offence would be committed whenever a match was manipulated with the intention of influencing a, better, a betting outcome. There are four parts to this bill. Very simply, we've got the title, the commencement, which is of course the Monday following this, the 15th of December of 2014, and the principle of the Act. This Act amends the Crimes Act of 1961. Uh, there are four new sections, 240A inserted, which I'd just like to go through now, Mr Speaker. 
A, application, uh, application of section 240 to, to match fixing. For the purpose of section 240, deception includes any act or omission that is done or omitted with intent to influence a betting outcome of an activity of a kind to which subsection 2 applies by the overall result of the activity or any event within the activity. This subsection applies to activities of the following kinds, sporting competitions, games, matches, races and rallies involving human participation, whether or not that also involves equipment, horses, vehicles or vessels. So the bill aims to protect the integrity of sport, uh, the sports stage, which will be found guilty in the eyes of New Zealand law. What will happen in regards to New Zealand participating in international sports which do not exist in New Zealand? Mr Speaker, on behalf of New Zealand First, I commend this bill to the House and am pleased to be part of the decision that all parties have taken in agreeing on. Thank you.